Climate change is one of the most important environmental challenges uh, that's facing the world today. Uh, nuclear power uh, can and is actually contributing significantly to reduce the gas uh, emissions. Um, today, uh, with the first commercial nuclear power station started back in the 1950s, we have 440 nuclear power reactors around the world operating in 31 countries with capacity providing more than 11% of uh, electricity uh, globally. Uh, the accident in Fukushima nuclear power plant back in 2011 caused public anxiety and raised in certain cases fundamental questions in terms of the future of nuclear power. Um, but however, almost six years uh, after the accident, it's clear that today nuclear energy continue to be an important uh, option for many countries and continue to, to operate uh, nuclear power plants around the world. In 2015, almost 30 member states of the IAEA uh, were actively considering or planning uh, nuclear power programs. Um, today, the nuclear power capacity worldwide is increasing steadily with over 60 reactors actually under construction in 15 countries, including four in the United Arab Emirates uh, here in the UAE. Um, if I could start with you, Mr. Romano, where do you see the future uh, prospects and trends in nuclear power uh, in terms of use globally? Thank you very much for inviting me to this very important um, conference. Um, um, IAEA is um, making estimates every year uh, on the future of uh, nuclear power uh, generation, and um, it shows that uh, there would be significant increase of the use of nuclear power up to 2030 and beyond. Our latest um, estimates uh, states uh, that in the lower scenario, lowest scenario, there will be 2% increase. At the highest um, uh, scenario, there would be 56% uh, of increase in the use of nuclear power by 2030. And as you rightly mentioned, um, the countries uh, that are considering uh, the increase of nuclear power um, are, are states uh, that uh, climate change uh, is one of the strongest reasons uh, for uh, the use of nuclear power. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jamet, if I could follow up on that question, in terms of the, uh, what's your view on the current challenges or current uh, capabilities when it comes to the nuclear regulatory frameworks and nuclear safety measures uh, globally? Thank you first again for inviting me for this uh, summit. It's very impressive to be here and in such a, a, a nice audience. Um, first, I, I'll speak as a regulator, and as a regulator, you know, I take I'm not part of the decision of energy mix or energy policy, but of course, I'm very much concerned with the future of nuclear safety. And to be a bit more pessimistic, I would say that if I look at facts, during the 40 last years, there were three major nuclear accidents, TMI, Chernobyl, Fukushima. This is quite a high frequency, and I think this calls for modesty because in none of these accidents there was any warning. The day before those accidents, everybody believed that nuclear safety was achieved. And so we never can avoid bad surprises. So I think we have to be modest in our prediction, and we also have to be very careful. And I think, of course, this means that all of us, all the key players in nuclear energy, have to strive a lot for continuous improvement. And there are, and, and there are of course, many areas where continuous improvement can be done and should be done, and this is from institutional point of view, like the regulatory or organizational framework, but also technical. And I think we'll have occasions to mention this further okay. in, in this uh, speech. Um, Mr. Armano, you mentioned that there are more than 30 countries are actually interested or planning to develop a nuclear power program, and these are actually formal uh, interests that expressed to the IAEA by, by these countries. Uh, in your view, what are the main challenges for these countries uh, embarking on nuclear power in terms of the development, in terms of planning, but also the successful deployment of nuclear power? There are a number of um, challenges. 
um, as you, as some, uh, Mr. Jame mentioned, uh, the safety is um, um, a very serious issue. Uh, but I would say after Fukushima Daiichi accident, safety culture has and, uh, strengthened a lot. And um, uh, nowadays, after Fukushima Daiichi accident, uh, the concept of uh, safety first is uh, widely accepted. Uh, but coming back to your question, what are the challenges? I would say a social acceptance uh, is uh, one of the most important issue. Uh, I have seen many nuclear power plants and examined uh, the, the plants. Uh, there are some delays uh, um, uh, because of uh, technical uh, reasons. But the delay uh, by the lack of uh, social acceptance is uh, very long and in some cases uh, the uh, project failed because of the lack of social acceptance. So uh, uh, gradual, transparent um, approach is very important to enhance uh, the social acceptance. Financing is um, also important, uh, but um, uh, um, uh, new ways are being developed uh, for uh, the financing. And um, uh, last point, um, uh, capacity building. Uh, your country is uh, very successful in, uh, in uh, training of nuclear professionals, uh, but I, I say public acceptance, financing, and capacity buildings are the main challenges in embarking on nuclear power. Mr. Jamet, on, when it comes to nuclear safety, uh, for newcomer countries that are interested in nuclear power, what are the main challenges in your view? Well, I think for, first I, I agree with uh, what DG Amano said and I, I support very much the, what IA is doing in particular in, in the field of safety. And actually for, for newcomers country, it's not only buying a nuclear power plant and have someone operating this nuclear power plant safely. I think in, for, in the safety area, there is a need for a huge investment in terms of the overall framework for safety, which is legal or regulatory, and also uh, technical, because I don't think a country can go for nuclear without acquiring the necessary technical competence. And, and let me just illustrate one point, which is that if a country goes for nuclear, they ha this country has to prepare for emergency preparedness. You, we, nobody can exclude that a severe accident will never happen or will happen. And so the country has to prepare for this. And this is not only the operator and the regulator that will be solicited in such a case. You will have civil security, you will have firemen, you will have armed force eventually, you will have hospitals, you will have people that are responsible for agriculture, for food, radiation protection, and so on. And so uh, if a country really wants to go for nuclear in a responsible way, it should prepare for this possibility of a severe accident. And this is just to illustrate how big mm -hmm. the effort is if this is done in a safe manner. Um, if I could move to another subject, one of the um, challenging or uh, matters when it comes to developing nuclear power, but also uh, for existing countries that are using nuclear power, is the nuclear waste issue. Um, this is something um, I think sometimes uh, is put forward as a major challenge for nuclear power. Uh, if I could start with uh, Mr. Amano, uh, your view, what is being done to address these concerns uh, globally? First thing uh, that I would like to say is that it is widely believed uh, that there is no solution uh, to deal with um, a nuclear waste. That is wrong. Um, a nuclear waste uh, can, be, uh, can be categorized into three one, the three categories, low level, um, uh, mid medium um, uh, level, and high level uh, waste. Uh, it is uh, difficult uh, to deal with um, uh, the uh, high level uh, waste and uh, spent fuel, fuel. But um, uh, even uh, with these um, uh, high level uh, waste and um, uh, spent fuel, there is a way of, um, uh, of solution, uh, which is uh, the deep geological uh, disposal. I went uh, to Finland uh, and saw the site of Onkalo, uh, where um, a very important project is, um, uh, is making very uh, good progress. And um, uh, the facility of deep geological facility uh, in Onkalo, Finland, is uh, due to start uh, the operation in 2022. 
uh, if uh, that takes place, it is at uh, the first uh, deep geological um, disposal facility. Similar projects are uh, ongoing and making progress in France and uh, Sweden. Uh, for the um, low-level and uh, medium-level waste, uh, um, uh, some, of them, uh, uh, some of them are, are being operated in commercial basis. So um, the most difficult one is uh, the high uh, level and spent fuel, but uh, there, uh, there is a solution and uh, there will be a solution. For others, uh, it is easier. But I would like to stress again uh, that social acceptance is very, very important. Uh, I saw uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the very serious efforts in Onkalo to talk to uh, the local community, and uh, they get um, uh, the full uh, understanding and support uh, from them. Uh, the uh, social acceptance is um, uh, uh, equally important in case of um, uh, addressing uh, the, uh, the waste. Uh, as well as uh, the constructing of nuclear power plant. The IAEA is um, uh, recommending an approach uh, from uh, gradle to grave. Uh, it means uh, that uh, from day one, uh, when you start uh, the use of um, uh, nuclear uh, technology, either for uh, nuclear power or other um, um, uh, purposes, uh, you have to uh, consider uh, how to deal with um, the nuclear waste. Grave, um, um, uh, cradle to grave uh, approach is um, uh, the principle to deal with um, uh, nuclear waste. Thank you. Mr. Jamet, do you have anything to add in terms of the French experience on, in this area? Yeah. Um, I, I see two, two problems and two time scales. Uh, and I'm, I'm only going to talk about high level waste, which is the most uh, probably important problem. For high level waste, you have to guarantee the safety of the disposal for something like a million years. And this, this, of course, sounds difficult, but actually, with a geological disposal, this is technically feasible. So from that point of view, uh, and this is feasible because geologists are able to predict relatively accurately the future of a one million year site. So, so I think there is a solution there. Where I, I fully agree with DG Amano that uh, on, on the other hand, there is another time scale for public acceptance because you know you will de dr drill a repository, then you will have to put the waste inside the repository, and then at the end you will close the repository. The order of magnitude is 100 years, maybe a bit less, maybe a bit more. But and 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 the challenge for the countries is to keep public acceptance for 100 years. Because you might get acceptance at one moment, but maybe 50 years after that, you will have another generation that has another state of mind and that might not agree anymore. So I think the big challenge is to keep the public acceptance over that time span. And, 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 and this is a very delicate issue. This is probably in France the most difficult we, we, we have to face. Elements of success is constant uh, political commitment. You know, the, 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 the French disposal, of course, is discussed at the political level, but the main ruling parties never question this. This is continuous oversight by the parliament, and this is a very, very progressive you know, legislative process that is uh, seeking for public engagement as much as possible and preserving re reversibility and, and change in the concept on, or, or, or in, the, in the design as much as possible so that people as much as possible feel that they can still have an influence and some control on what's going on. Thank you. Um, uh, DG Amano, uh, developing a nuclear uh, power program is a major undertaking. What are the country's responsibilities when it comes to safety, uh, security, uh, non-proliferation? Uh, if you can just elaborate a little bit more in terms of this, uh, it's not just a commercial uh, reactor that uh, the, the countries are pursuing. Safety and security, uh, nuclear security, I mean uh, to prevent uh, the nuclear material falling into the hands of terrorists. Safety and security are the responsibility of each state. And, and the role of international organization like ours is to assist them. But uh, the current trend or recent trend is that the role of um, international organization 
to assist member states, countries, uh, is uh, increasing. Uh, for example, it is um, 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 your country uh, to ensure the highest level of safety uh, to operate uh, the, uh, the Baraka nuclear power plant. Uh, but um, IAEA establishes some uh, safety standards, help um, um, uh, the training uh, and uh, dispatch peer review missions uh, to uh, provide assistance. A uh, similar thing can be said about uh, the nuclear security. Uh, it is uh, each country's responsibility uh, to prevent uh, the nuclear material falling into the hands of terrorists. But um, the IAEA is a depository of an international um, uh, convention, and uh, we provide training um, uh, to uh, the uh, custom officers or um, uh, border control officers. Uh, we donate um, uh, detection equipment uh, to identify uh, the uh, nuclear material coming into the country. Um, and uh, we maintain uh, the database to analyze and establish the response against uh, nuclear terrorism. Uh, the um, non proliferation is the responsibility of uh, each country and IAEA. It is a bit different. Um, when um, uh, a country uh, joins um, uh, the non proliferation treaty as a non nuclear weapon state, um, the country has an obligation uh, to uh, conclude an agreement which is called a comprehensive safeguard. Um, it is some, um, 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 uh, an agreement uh, to declare all the nuclear material and facility for peaceful purpose. And IAEA verifies. Now, um, a nuclear safety, se uh, security, uh, safeguard uh, are very important, uh, and um, uh, safety, security are the responsibility of each country, but the IAEA helps them. Uh, safeguard, uh, including the comprehensive safeguard and additional protocol, uh, are um, uh, essential to ensure uh, that nuclear material and facilities are used uh, exclusively uh, for peaceful purpose. If I could follow up with the last question, uh, since the time is out. How is the UAE is working with the IA? Since the, uh, the beginning of, um, 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 uh, of the project, uh, UAE and IAEA have um, been working in close cooperation. Uh, we have trained uh, um, uh, nuclear uh, professionals and uh, we have um, been um, uh, uh, cooperating uh, with um, uh, Khalifa, uh, Khalifa University. And uh, your country is organizing a nuclear management school uh, in the past two years ago and uh, this year in May. And um, we are very happy uh, that um, very close cooperation uh, is, um, um, uh, is being undertaken between your country and IAEA. And um, uh, very importantly, in October this year, you are hosting together with us um, a nuclear uh, power conference at ministerial level um, uh, for the 21st century. And I uh, wish, would like to congratulate your country with a very good cooperation with us and some um, other convening of uh, this very important uh, conference on nuclear power in the 21st century at ministerial level in your country in October this year. Well, Mr. Amano, Sir Jamet, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to be with, with us today. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.